Previously, we focused on the oxygen binding curve of myoglobin and hemoglobin, and we saw that in the case of myoglobin, myoglobin binds oxygen very strongly. It has a very high affinity for oxygen, and it binds oxygen in a non-cooperative fashion. On the other hand, we saw that the shape for our hemoglobin curve was a sigmoidal shape, and this describes the cooperative behavior of hemoglobin. So even though hemoglobin has a lower affinity for oxygen than myoglobin, hemoglobin is able to bind oxygen in a cooperative fashion. And that's exactly why our body prefers to, prefers to use hemoglobin as the carrier and the transport of oxygen inside our body. Now, that discussion was a more qualitative approach. Now let's take a look at a more quantitative approach as to why our body actually uses hemoglobin instead of myoglobin as the transporter and carrier of oxygen from the lungs to the tissues of our body. So let's begin by recalling some basic biological facts. Inside our lungs, the partial pressure of oxygen is about 100 millimeters of mercury. Inside our resting tissue, when we're not exercising, the partial pressure drops to 40 millimeters of mercury. And inside our exercising tissue, for example, if we're swimming or running, our partial pressure drops to about 20 millimeters of mercury. So we want to use these values and the oxygen dissociation curves for myoglobin and hemoglobin to basically show why hemoglobin is a much better carrier of oxygen than myoglobin. So let's begin with the hemoglobin. So this red curve describes the oxygen dissociation curve for hemoglobin. So as we go from right to left, from the lungs to our tissue, our hemoglobin essentially unloads and releases that oxygen. So let's begin inside our lungs. And let's suppose we're going from the lungs to our resting tissue. So the lungs have a partial pressure of 100 millimeters of mercury. And the corresponding Y value at this point is about 0.98. So that means about 98% of the hemoglobin is fully saturated inside our lungs. Now, when the hemoglobin travels down to our resting tissue, which is at a pressure of about 40 millimeters of mercury, the corresponding Y value is about 0.77. And that means about 77% of that hemoglobin is fully saturated with oxygen inside our resting tissue. Now, what that tells us is when the hemoglobin goes from the lungs to the resting tissue, there is a difference of about 21%. And what that means is 21% of that oxygen, of that hemoglobin, has successfully unloaded and released the oxygen to the resting cells of our body. So this is how much oxygen can be unloaded by the hemoglobin when it goes from the lungs to the resting tissue. Now, what about if we're exercising? How much can hemoglobin deliver if our tissues are exercising? Well, in the case of the exercising tissue, the partial pressure is at 20 millimeters of mercury. And we see that because we have this sigmoidal shaped curve, there is a drastic drop in our fractional saturation of hemoglobin. So we go from here to about here. And this Y value corresponds to about 0.32. And that means when our tissues exercising, 32% of that hemoglobin is fully saturated with oxygen. And so now when we go from the lungs to our exercising tissue, there is a difference of 98% minus 32%, so 66%, and that means 66% of the hemoglobin has unloaded and released that oxygen to the cells of our body that are exercising, and that is a lot of oxygen. And that means hemoglobin can successfully deliver the oxygen to our tissues of the body from the lungs. Now, what about myoglobin? Well, let's do the same exact thing for myoglobin. So in the case of myoglobin, so let's take out a marker. 
In the case of myoglobin, we begin once again at the lungs, just the same way we began here at the lungs. So at the lungs, we have 100 millimeters of mercury, and that corresponds to about 98%, so 0.98 fractional saturation, or 98% of the myoglobin, is saturated in the lungs, which is the same value as for the hemoglobin case. But look what happens when we go down to this value, which corresponds to the resting tissue there is only a very, very small drop in the fractional saturation of myoglobin when we go from the lungs to the resting tissue. About 1% difference. And that means only about 1% of that myoglobin has successfully unloaded that oxygen into the tissue. And that's a very, very small amount. It's simply not enough for those cells in the resting tissue to actually use the oxygen to create enough ATP. Now, if we examine the difference between the lungs and the exercising tissue, so going from the lungs to this point, this point corresponds to a value of about 0.91. So that means 91% of the myoglobin is saturated in exercising tissue of our body. And so 98 minus 91 gives us a difference of about 7%. So this is a tremendous difference. 7% would not be enough for our body to actually create enough ATP molecules and to use the ATP molecules for the various processes. And that's precisely why it's the hemoglobin molecule and not the myoglobin that our body actually prefers as the carrier of oxygen. Because it's the hemoglobin that can successfully unload enough oxygen, 21% in this case and 66% in this case, to our cells of the body. Our myoglobin simply has too high of an affinity for oxygen and it will not be able to successfully unload enough oxygen to the resting tissue or to our exercising tissue. And that's exactly why it's myoglobin that is used as the storage protein that stores oxygen inside our muscle cells, but it's the hemoglobin that is used as the carrier because it binds oxygen in a non-cooperative fashion which gives it a sigmoidal shape and it is able to successfully unload enough oxygen to the tissues of our body. So once again, we see that hemoglobin's cooperative behavior allows it to unload much more oxygen successfully to the tissues than myoglobin. And this is why our body prefers to use hemoglobin as the transporter for oxygen inside our cardiovascular system, inside our bloodstream. And myoglobin simply has too high of an attraction to oxygen. It binds it way too strongly. And so what that means is it will not be able to unload enough oxygen to the cells of either the resting tissue or the exercising tissue of our body.